We 
It's a place to live in freedom. 
Oh, God, you're so good. 
remember how good you are. Lord, that even when stuff doesn't go perfectly, God, that we rest in, God, the finished work that you've given us freely. God, let us know how deeply good you are. God, you're so good to us. And God, I pray that whenever life seems like it's terrible, and it might be, God, that we can rest in eternity. Lord, thank you for just an awesome day of seeing a baptism, God. God, just a salvation happening in this church is so exciting. God, let us stay fueled by that and excited about that and want to take part in that. But God, I pray that today you just keep on working and God speak to us in your name. Amen.
And then for those who teach the call to joy, we will break up into small groups and we will actually walk through the call to joy together so that in our church, now listen to this, in our church, being that we're kingdom minded and we're thinking of how we can make disciples, every believer that comes on that PC night will be equipped with walking through the discipleship and being able to learn how to take someone one-on-one -on -one and disciple that new believer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
powerful way. So this morning, I think I remembered, I, I believe I remembered everything. Children's ministry. If you are willing to help with our children's ministry, we need people. And here's what, let's just use Randy's example. Take someone with you when you go in to start training them to be able to work in children's ministry. Uh, preschool, we really need preschool workers, so please come and be a part. All right, let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we want to read from God's word. Our dear Father, I just come to you, Lord, and I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time, Father, that we can come today and talk about a church that's irresistible, Father. Lord, I pray that uh, we open your word, Father. May we open it, Father, and may we look for you to speak to us. And Lord, as we talk about worship today, I pray that I am as clear as I can be and that we can see the things that you are doing and what is true worship. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, I want to talk about worship and what true worship really looks like. Now, each one of us probably can think back to a moment that you have been in a, a service, or maybe you've been home by yourself, or maybe you've been in a car, or maybe in a woods hunting or something, or fishing, I don't know. But you've been in a place to where you've experienced God in such a way that you stopped everything that you was doing, and your focus went straight on who God really is. And you just started worshiping Him, giving Him glory and honor and worshiping him. For me, I, I want to tell you one, I think I shared this somewhat a couple of weeks ago, but uh, when, I was, when I was in Africa, in a country that we wasn't supposed to be in, and we were, we were went to teach that night, and in that service, a man said, we want to stop and pray and just seek God. We sit down on the floors, it was candles, that was lit across the floors and we started singing. I didn't really understand everything they were singing. Uh, there was a couple of missionaries that was there that I could understand them. I could understand Paul and those people, but I really, I really, um, we did not, we did not, um, we really, we really didn't, didn't know exactly what was going on. And so, um, what happened was, what happened was, we began to just to worship. We started singing, and as we sang, um, we just we were just singing songs. And then someone out of the blue would pick up the word, and they would give you a scripture. And then these people who couldn't have a Bible would pick up a scripture, and they would just read that scripture. I mean, they would just out of memory from the heart start quoting that scripture about who God was. And the first 30 minutes went by and they said, anyone who feels led to pray can pray. If you feel led to read a, a scripture or if you want to sing a song, whatever you want to do, you can do it. An hour went away. An hour and a half went away. Two hours was gone. Now we're at midnight and we're kind of, we're kind of seeing what's going on. And the Lord is moving in this place. And before I know it, we were no longer sitting on our hindies. We were on our knees and we were bowing down before God and just calling on God. And, 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 and we can see God just moving in a, in a special way. I'll never forget that moment. Another time I remember that it was very special. We had a guy that was standing and we was in an unreached people group and we were singing a song and he was singing um, beautiful, 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 talking about the name of Jesus. Um, and, and, uh, and then he would say, glory, glory, glory. I said, I ain't going to sing y'all a song because I can't sing. Y'all will get up and leave. But as he was singing this song and as he was leading us in worship, there was a quietness that, that happened. Everybody stopped singing except him. And I noticed that things were changing very quickly in the room. And people started bowing down, and he just kept saying over and over. It was so crazy because all he was saying was, beauty, beauty, beautiful. Glory, glorious, glorious. You are. You are. And he kept singing those words and singing those words. And I remember as I went from a standing position to a kneeling position, I remember that there was people there on this mission trip that had traveled with me from, from 
from here in Calhoun County, and I feel them come up and put their hands on my back and tell me, hey, will you pray with me? Will you, will you pray with me at this time? And then all of a sudden, we're back in our seats, and, and we're praying again and, and singing this song, and, and then all of a sudden, this girl comes up and says, I have never experienced God in this way. I need to give Jesus my life. Amen. Worship. Worship. Amen. Where the mind is completely off of the things that we are doing and the music that's happening or the, the scripture that's being read and our focus goes straight to the Father. Listen to this in Psalms. I, I just wanted to start this off where we would get real excited at the very beginning. So if you would turn your Bibles to Psalms chapter 95. Psalms <laughs> chapter 95. And I want to read verses 1 through 7. If you would, if you would stand for the reading of God's Word. Here's what it says. Psalms 95, 1 through 7. O come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rocks of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to Him with psalms. Let me just say this. I'm going to stop right now. Have you ever thought that we may have lost our shout? Yeah. Yeah. We may have lost that shout. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth, the peaks of the mountains are, at, are his also. The sea is his. For it was he who made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before our Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. Mm. And we are His people. Yeah. Amen. His Amen. Mm. And the sheep of His hand. Mm -hmm. The sheep of His hand. You may be seated. This morning, I want you to think about that. They came before the Lord and they recognized Him exactly for who He is. They recognized him as Lord God, our creator. To worship God, now I want you to listen to this and I want you to try to catch this as, as we're going along. Because I'm going to say this over and over. You're going to hear me say a lot about this. To worship God means to ascribe the proper work to God. The proper work to God. To magnify to, 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 to magnify his worthiness of praise. And by the way, let me say this. There is a difference between praise and worship. Worship is completely done here in the mind and in the heart. Praise is what we give God. As we've seen him, you know, uh, the, the, the dance, the, 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 the praise of the Lord. We praise God. But true worship is done in the heart and in the mind. I want you to think about that as we, as we go on. Here's what, here's what, the, what is said here. It's the worthiness of praise or better to approach and address God as he is worthy. As the holy and almighty God, the creator, the sustainer of the universe, the sovereign judge, whom we must give an account to. That is who we are worshiping. Yeah. It is our true God. The true God of who he is. Our focus is not on, 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 on what we're doing in here. It's on who God is. Worship is an attitude of the heart. Amen. Wait a minute, let's, let's, let's back up for a minute because we gotta, you've got to be able to understand this because I love when we come in and we worship and we do things. Worship is an attitude of the heart. A person can go through an outward emotion and not be worshiping. Wait a minute, hold on. We can go through the motions. We can have an outward appearance that we are doing the things that we need to be doing to worship and not have the right motive. And it's not worship. Mm -hmm. Not worship at all. God sees the heart and he desires.
desires a sincere, heartfelt worship. A heartfelt worship. So I'm going to give you two verses that's going to set the stage for everything that we sing. The first one is when Jesus was being tempted, which goes back to the Old Testament. But in Matthew 14, here's what he said. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Amen. Jesus himself emphasized the obeying what the Old Testament has said. To worship the Lord your God. Now I want to show you something because we will get up, we will get excited about worshiping. But there's a time that we can come in here and there's a time that we can do things and we're not doing it for the right reasons, without the right motives. Here's what Matthew 15, verses 8 through 9 says. The people honored me with their lips. They were giving them praise. They were singing and doing things. They were, they were saying the things with their lips. But listen to what it says. But their heart is far away from me. See, a lot of times we come in these doors and we just take it by chance that we can come in and we're going to experience the things that needs to be experienced. And sometimes we will go through all the motions of doing those things and it's for no reason at all. Here's what he says. Here's what, here's what he says. But the heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me. But in vain. It means it's useless. It has no worth. Now that scares me. I know like two years ago when I wanted, maybe, maybe it's been a year, maybe two years, we talked about this when we was looking at spiritual disciplines about worship and not worshiping in vain. Do you realize that God sees our heart? So we've got to get in our mind because when I say worship, we automatically run to Zeke up here playing the guitar and these people singing. It is so much more than the guitars, the singing, the, the drums, and all these things. It is so much more than that. Without coming in this house with a heart that is upon God and looking for God, that is surrendered to God, that is ready to worship Him, you will not worship. And by the way, let me say this, and you'll hear me say it later, but in case we get up run too far, I want to say this now, is if you're not worshiping during the week, you can't come in here and worship. That's right. All right. Amen. Amen. Worship is a day by day time that you worship the Lord your God. He didn't say just come in on Sunday and light that fire to be able to worship. No, it's a, it's a day by day. It's worshiping Him with everything that's within you. Is worship. Notice that God calls their activity that they were doing as worship. And these people believed they were honoring God, but they rejected the worship. Their worship was in vain. Jesus rejected their worship and called it vain. How can we worship without worshiping Him in vain? Here's what I want to tell you that I want us to look at quickly. Is He says for me and you to worship Him, to worship the Lord your God. Then he says that we can worship in vain. So how do we not do that? First of all, I want to look at worship is focusing, is focusing on and responding to God. It's responding to God. Here's what, here's what I want you to see. Worship gets to the heart of who we are. Worship brings us to a place of your relationship with God and where you are with God. To truly worship God, we must let go of our self-worship, let go of our self-worship. We must be willing to humble ourselves before God and to surrender every part of our lives under His control. See, true worship is only when we surrender everything and we give it just to Him. It's not about what everybody else is doing. It's only for Him. Amen. Is what true worship it's all about. Who 
What would make you excited? Yeah. What would make you excited to know that you can go before the Father and you I don't need him to go before the Father to worship, he wants me to come. Amen. And Kim can't do her worship for me, I have to worship myself. That's because right. he's my God. He's my God. I have to remove, Kim can't remove the things in my life to be able to get me into that place. Only myself can get to that place to where I can really see him to worship him. He is not just, it's not just what he has done. It's not just what he has done. Worship is a lifestyle. Now I want you to think about that. Worship is a lifestyle. Not just an occasional, occasional activity. It's not something you just come in and occasionally every now and then you worship God. You know, I was telling you about, about those times that I've really experienced that's just stays on my, my front. You know, sometimes we try to go back to that area. Yeah. And we think that that area, that whatever we were doing, we can relive that again. No, it's not It's not going back to a place or an activity that you was in. It was your relationship with God. When you think about those things, me and Kim was talking about this last night, you know, when you're a pastor's wife, Sometimes you get most of the message before anybody else ever gets it. You know, instead of having a regular Saturday night, she's hearing things that's going to happen in the message. And we were talking about worship. Kim, you know, tell me about some times when, when worship really happened. And she was telling me about the time that she was on the praise team. And, you know, praise team practice happens all the time. You hear when it happens. But this time, I don't know if she was singing or not, but this guy was leading the praise team was singing, and they were singing the old song, Let It Rain. And she said, some of you, some of you may have been in there with her during this time, and, and that song, it just started singing, Let It Rain. And as they were singing, it was like the Holy Spirit just fell down upon them, and then no one wanted to leave. They wanted to stay right there and worship God. See, the point is, it's not that you was in that place, but you were getting to worship God. When you get to that place, you don't want to leave. If we're going to become an irresistible church, we have to get to the place that our focus is on um, <coughs> responding to God and who He is for real worship to happen. The Father is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's from John chapter 4, verse 23. I want to give you some examples of what true worship looks like. For me, if I can see it, then it helps me to understand. Listen to some of these verses that I want to give you that really will help you understand. Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. We're talking about around the throne now. We're talking about around the throne. This is what it, what it looked like. Here it is. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And the day and night they do not cease to say, listen, here it goes, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who, who was and who is and who is to come. Amen. They're standing around the throne and they're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty. They're recognizing who he is. He's in control of all things. He's holy. Revelation 4.11, just a couple verses down, here's what he says. Worthy are you, our Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. Here's what's happening. We're giving him glory. <laughs> Worthy are you, our Lord, our God. It's a personal thing between you and God. He's my Lord, my God. Revelation 5, 12, 13. I mean, chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 12 through 13. Here's what he's saying. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to yes. receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessings. Amen. And every created thing which was in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all the things in them, I heard them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessings and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. What is Amen. He is right. around that throne. If we just worship him and put him in a place where it wasn't about what we were doing, but we're 
I want to give you an example here on earth. It, 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 it's, a, it's a good one that you will all understand. You remember old Dad Thomas? Yeah. Oh, old Thomas, he, he, he didn't know. He didn't know. And he had to see before he really understood what was going on. In John chapter 20, verses 27 through 28, here's what he said. Then he said to Thomas, reach here with your fingers and see my hands. And reach in your hands and put it to my side. And do and do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas said, here it goes. Here's where the worship started. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord, my God. I want you to think about that because the day that Katie walked this aisle and she gave her life to Christ, when she came forward and she said, yes, I want to surrender my life to Christ. I want to make him Lord of my life. You know what she was doing? She was worshiping. She was worshiping because now God had taken the first in her life. She had surrendered everything, her old life, completely to him. And, he, and Thomas here is a great example of that. My Lord, my God, worship. What true worship is all about. Amen. Worship is focusing on God. But worship is to be done in spirit and in truth. Now listen, this is where we get off sometimes. It is done in spirit and in truth. In John chapter 4, verses 23 through 24, here's what it says. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit. And those who worship me worship in spirit and truth. In spirit and truth. It's not about what our outside looks like. It's what your heart is doing. In the spirit, of, in your spirit, in your heart, what are you doing? The Word of God says in, in John chapter 14, 16, and 17, He says, I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. We have the spirit of truth living inside of me and you through the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. Mm. But you know him because he abides with you mm. and will be in you. We worship in spirit and in truth. The story that I was reading to start with was about the woman at the well. See, she, she thought that you had to be there's all kinds of different things that she thought about worship. But then Jesus nailed it down. Jesus made it clear that the physical location of worship is no longer rebel, rebel. Yet a time is coming and has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father is seeking. See, if we want to be an irresistible church, we have got to be those people who worship in spirit and in truth. When that happens, what does that mean? Well, true worship must be in spirit. That is engaging the whole heart. That is our whole heart being sold out to worship. That is what that means. We have to be sold out completely, wholehearted. Unless there's a real passion for God, there is no worship in the Spirit. Oh, Keith, what are you saying? Well, if we don't have a passion for God, if we're not seeking God, how, how are we going to worship Him in the Spirit? If our heart, if we don't have everything about us, how are we truly going to worship? You know, I was, I mean, Tim Poole was talking uh, yesterday, or Friday, about, about, Everything that we do. Do you realize when we come up here and, and you're doing activities around the church, really that's worship. Because your heart is set on the things that you're doing, and you're doing it out of the reasons to serve God. Not to serve man, not to serve Greenbrier, but because you are serving God. It's, a, it's a, 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 your heart. But not only that, everything that we do is done through the Spirit, through the heart, and the right and the right motives for that. I'll get to that in just a minute. I don't want to jump ahead. And so here's what it says. At the same time, worship 
must be true. Worship must be true. This is, this is meaning, unless we have knowledge of God, we worship, there will be no worship in truth. This word right here. When we leave the worship, and it don't cover in the word of God. See, truth is what the word says. Amen. If, 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 if it don't line up with who God is by the word of God, then you can't worship in spirit and truth because that leads people the wrong way. And that's not the truth. See, we don't look at it that way, guys. Here's what we look at. When we sing a song, that song shouldn't match what the Word of God says. If that, if that song don't match what the Word of God says, and, and, and I don't care how we're doing it, but if it don't match what the Word of God says, then it's wrong. It's not in spirit or in truth. See, it, 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 the true worshiper, the true worshiper is worshiping in spirit and in truth. That means that in order for my heart to be right with God, I have to know the truth. That means I should be in the Word. That's that relationship with Him every day, learning the Word and investing it in my life and, and putting it in my life. Do you see that? Let me just stop for a minute and read my notes and just say this. I want to say this. Do we understand that last week we can be doing a lot of things? We can be about a lot of work and a lot of activity. And it can be wrong. Today we can come and sit in the church and we can sing praise. We can read God's <coughs> word. We can tithe. We can follow the Lord in baptism. We can take communion. We can do all these different things and do it with the wrong motive. And it's in vain. Now I want you to think about that just for a second. I want us to just quickly think about what, what I just said. You can come and do a lot of things and do it out of the wrong reasons. Don't that make it so important that every day he should be first, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. See, when we seek God and we're in that relationship with him, we abide in Him, when we abide in Him, then these things just automatically come out of us. See, here, here's the deal. You know, if we will get to that place, if we will get to that place and we worship God in that way and quit caring what, what Kathleen is thinking and what Kim's thinking and John's thinking, if we will get what Zeke is doing up here, you know, he's leading us in worship. He's, he's bringing us. But when we take our focus off of what Zeke's doing and what everybody else is doing around us and we're looking at the Word of God and we're thinking about the words that's being sang to, to our Father in heaven and we realize that they're not singing them songs to me and you. We're singing them to the Lord and giving Him praise. Yeah. True worship will come out. Amen. Can you imagine what it would feel like in this house if God built this house with true worship? See, here's what would happen. I know what would happen. God would start speaking to you. He would take this man. You know, they would take me. And the words that I speak may not come out exactly right, but here's what would happen to you. You don't need it to come out right because I'm telling you what God's been giving me. So because we're worshiping him, he's going to grow you. He's going to use those words to lift you up. The songs that we're being sing, we will praise him and put him in the right honor and glory. That's right. Bring those That's right. Glory because we're doing it because we're worshiping. When I come to tithe, I don't have to pay people to tithe every week. We don't have to tell them how you do it. You know what? It's no longer a tithe. It'll become a gift because why? Because I've been along with God. Amen. I'm worshiping Him. I want to give Him everything that I have. All right. Oh, when I take the Lord's Supper, it will not be no longer just sitting in a pew and somebody have me bread in a cup and put it in my mouth and take a drink of it and then leave out these doors. No, uh, it'll mean that I'm reflecting on Calvary and what Jesus yeah. did for me on Calvary. And now I'm focused on that. Amen. See, it changes the way that we see who God is. And when we change who God is, it takes our selfish pride completely away from us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Y'all can't tell. I've been along with God all week. I told someone Tuesday, I couldn't hardly stand it. I got in my truck Tuesday and I, I was I was I was just overflowing. Amen. We had opportunities on Wednesday to be 
there to share. You remember a moment God and you were seeking God? God shows up in such a powerful way, He will change everything about you. Both are necessary for God to honor God. Truth and spirit. The spirit without truth leads to a shallow, overly emotional experience that could be compared as a high. When all we have is we say we do it in spirit, we get so excited you get on that top high, but then you come off. But listen to what happens. When we have, when we have, as soon as the emotions is over, when the when the fervor that cools down, the worship ends. Truth without spirit can be so dry that you can't even stand it. You know, you're in this place and you never worship them, you never give them praise. It's passionless. You don't encounter God at all. You lose your joy. You, you become legalism. All these things happen. But the combination of both aspects of worship, when they come together and they form in the scripture of God's word and we worship in spirit and truth, we find true worship. Amen. True worship. Worship is also expected, as I end today, I want to tell you, worship is expected both publicly and privately. I want to show you first privately. It says but in Luke chapter 5, verse 16, he says, But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. He would often slip to the wilderness and pray. Our worship starts privately. It starts privately. I remember one time, and Tim Poole may remember this. Um, I share a lot about Tim because me and Tim worked together for years. Um, I was sitting in my art shop, which is a little, little bit of what I'll tell you about later if you want to know. Ask him, Tim, will tell you all about the art But I was sitting in this art shop, and I was at, I was at an igloo. I want to about an igloo, ask him. Uh, and we were monitoring these igloos for, for chemicals and things. And I was sitting there, and I had my Bible, and I, I don't even remember what was play, playing on the music on the, on the radio, but I had the radio on, and I had my Bible sitting there. And as I read my Bible, I started getting to a place to where I just got lost in the Word. You ever been where you just get lost in the Word, where, where you're really not reading? You're not reading it. Almost feels like. Let me just tell you what it feels like. It feels like to me. Um, I didn't do this with my dad, but I did it with my boys, and I can imagine. Here's what happened. My boys used to come, and I used to crawl up in his arms, and they would. I would wrap my arms around them and hold them. So even to this day, both of my boys still will come and get in the chair with me and put them back in my chair, and I'll hold them tight. Well, I was in that arm tap that day, and here's what happened. It felt like the Lord just. Right around, right around me, holding me close. And I could feel his presence so strong in that old house. It's worship. Yes. Private worship. See, mm -hmm. when you get along with God and we start recognizing who he is, then we can see the things. How can we worship God publicly once a week when we do not care to worship him privately? Can we expect the flames of our worship of God to burn brightly in the public when it's been just a flicker in the week? Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people come in and they look for worship and they see worship in so many different places. For us to become an irresistible church, when they see worship, they should see Worship is God. We miss the blessings and the joy and His presence when we don't worship Him privately. I want to end with this publicly. Here's what the Word of God says. Not forsaking, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking our own assembling together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the days drawing near. God is expecting his people to come publicly to 
worship together. Let me just tell you some things today that we don't look at as, as worship. As I get up to speak today and I teach you the Word of God, that's worship. Singing, when we sing songs, we just talk about it. When, when we come from the Word of God and they match the Word of God and it's done in spirit and truth, here's what happens. We worship. Tithing. When I give back to the Lord, I'm worshiping Him. I'm not giving to, to Greenbrier. I'm not giving to, to whatever I'm doing. It's just me and the Lord. See, a lot of people look at this thing, and when they see it, they, they see it as something, I've got to do this. I've got to do it. I've got to. I, 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 I have to. No. If that heart's not right, it's done from the wrong motive. Yes. See, when, when I get to come and I get to put my offerings into the plate, or even, just wonder I have it. I don't have much money in there. <laughs> Whatever I have in the billfold, it's all God's. He, he's the one that's letting me be the steward over the things that he has given me. So I'm able to worship him by giving back. Saying, yes, Lord, I'll be a good steward. But not only that, not through, not through just tithing, but what about our prayers when we come before him and we recognize who he is as the holy God, the one who's in control of everything, and we lift up to him. That is true worship. Baptism. Communion. All is public worship. So let me ask you today. You know, maybe today you don't realize exactly what it looks like to worship God publicly, privately. Maybe you haven't had that in your life, and today you realize, hey, I need that in my life. Church, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. As a whole, we need to be true worshipers. Amen. Not one that's just a Sunday morning come in. No, we're true worshipers serving God. Today, the last part of worship that I'm going to talk about is that day that you come, whether you say, lost, or whatever. But we come and we lay it down here at the feet of the altar. You know, the altar is a place where something dies. I don't know what we have in our lives and what's going on with our lives. If we if we've never surrendered our life to Christ, right here's the place to come, to lay it down and say, Lord, I give you my life. I surrender my life to you. I want to make you Lord of my life. But not only that, maybe today as you've been sitting here, maybe today you, you have figured out, you know, I really don't worship him at all because I really don't know who he is. And maybe today would be the day of salvation for you. Maybe today you're looking for a church and you want to make this your home. Maybe you hear some things that, that you want to be a part of if we have seen in another church and you want to be a part of it, you're welcome to come and to be a part of us here at Greenbrier. Or maybe today you just need to lay it down at the altar and praise Him. <coughs> Whatever your decision is, the altars are open to you. See if you'll come. Our dear Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we can study your word.